Welcome into a special edition of the Future Sox podcast. My name is Elijah Evans, and I am here today with Sean Burke, uh, Chicago White Sox pitching prospect. I'm really excited to have Sean on with me and talk a little bit about where he's at. He's in the process of rehabbing right now, working back towards getting on the mound uh, and making his return this season. And we're really excited just to hear from Sean about himself um, and where he's at in his pitching progression. So welcome in, man. Thank you. Thanks for having me. Appreciate you coming on and making the time for us. Um, we'll, we'll start here. I don't want to dive too directly into, you know, everything you've got going on right now. Um, we'll go back a little bit and give people, you know, our listeners that don't know you all that well a chance to get mm-hmm. to know you a little bit beyond. Uh, so you were drafted in, in 2021, right? Coming 2020, from Maryland. Yeah. Um, yeah, and then in your first season, right, you were you had your first professional year, right? You pitched a few games in, in 21 that season when you first mm-hmm. got drafted. Um, you ended up doing making five starts with Annapolis. And then yeah. jumping into 2022, you climbed from Winston and then Birmingham and ended up even mm-hmm. finishing with Charlotte in your first professional season. Um, it was just a, a really impressive year all around. I think it kind of boosted you onto to prospect radar uh, for White mm-hmm. Sox fans, 137 strikeouts that season. Uh, what was it like first getting drafted by the White Sox and then just having such a, a lengthy, successful, first professional season it was cool i mean uh, you know coming from massachusetts you don't see a ton of guys or at least i didn't see a ton of guys that i grew up with or like saw playing against some guys older than me that were getting drafted so once that whole process kind of started like the end of high school into kind of college um it started to click like my junior year like hey this is actually a reality for me and um it was cool to just go through the whole process and see like you know meet with different teams see how different teams are you know, going about the draft process, see what different teams have to offer, what their philosophies are. Um, and then obviously, you know, landed with the White Sox and, um, you know, meeting everybody there, meeting the staff, meeting the guys in the front office. It's been good. I mean, I've I've had a good time. I've met a lot of people that, you know, I'll probably be friends with post-baseball for the rest of my life. Um, so, I mean, going through that whole thing was just, it was, it was a really cool experience. Yeah, that's awesome. Um, going going even back further a little bit, I know you were a guy that had um, Tommy John in high school, right? Um, yeah. So it was uh-huh. that's a big thing with baseball right now. I know that's the yeah. hot topics around baseball uh-huh. right now. It's just this question of how do you prevent pitching injuries, right? So yeah. what was it like for you having that so early? And do you think it helped you in a weird way to yeah. be more successful in college and then once you got drafted? I think 100% it helped me be more successful in college. I think that I relatively, I'd say I was a relatively late bloomer in high school. Like I wasn't really ever a guy that was getting recruited by like huge big time schools. I mean, I'd say Maryland was one of my best offers coming out of high school. Um, And it was kind of a situation where like I took the visit there. I loved the school, loved the visit. Um, You know, it was a conversation with my coaches, my parents. It's like, if you want to play this game at the highest level, like that's going to be your best bet to go to the best school you can. And then kind of just bet on yourself once you're there. so Tommy John coming out of my senior year, I was obviously super upset when it happened. Um, you know, that was the first real injury I've had in any sport that's sidelined me for a significant amount of time. Um, <clears throat> and you know, when you're 17, 18 years old, like that's kind of the end of your world. But uh, spending that year rehabbing and getting to see how the college game works and kind of adjusting to that next level without really having to play right away, I think was huge because I was able to sit back, you know, watch the mistakes other freshmen made and then kind of learn that the, learn the lessons you learn your first year of college without any risk of failing. Basically, like I was able to kind of get out of the season, what people get out playing the whole season without playing and having to, you know, struggle on the field. Um, and then that next fall and preseason, I got my fair share of struggles out of the way. I had, had a real rough first like fall preseason with Maryland but then um once that season started my my red shirt year I had no issues and I kind of hit the ground running so I think looking back on it now that was something that that really allowed me to grow you know pay attention to my body more get stronger in the weight room put on some more weight you know kind of look at my pitching arsenal and really start to fine-tune some things um and I was in a weird situation where like I got Tommy John pitched you know, four games, I think it was my redshirt freshman year and then COVID hit. So it was like, yeah, right. as soon as I was getting back on the, on my feet, COVID hit and knocked the season out. But yeah, honestly, looking back at that too, that was just kind of more of the same, like, all right, here's some time where I'm, I'm not going to have to face competition. Like, let's start, you know, working more and more and starting to more fine tune my stuff. And, um, and then I really just had that one year, my junior year to go out and show everything. And then, you know, going into that first year of pro ball in 2022 um that was kind of the first year i was like all right i've kind of been basically majority of the time training the last three or four years and kind of fine-tuning what i want to do and this is the year i can go ahead and show 
everything I've been working on because that's accumulated over those three, four years. Right. No, that's interesting. I mean, it's, it's <clears throat> obviously you never want to have to deal with getting surgery yeah, you don't uh-huh. deal with COVID and all these other factors. Right. But uh-huh. I think from a lot of guys that you hear around baseball right now, like there's <clears throat> something to be said for having a year where you're focused yeah, on nothing, but your body and your training and all these other aspects that goes into being a successful baseball player. Right. Yeah, no, I agree. I mean, there's things that I would not have even paid attention to or learned if it wasn't for, you know, that, I guess, two years with COVID and, right. uh, and, and the Tommy John there. So there's, there's pros and cons for sure, but at least yeah. you were able to take something out of that and work yeah. off that. And then going into 2022, what were some <clears> of the things that you, I guess, part of what you learned during those few years, and then in addition to just your first mm-hmm. full off season with the organization, what helped you to be so successful early in your minor league mm-hmm. career and then just continue to, you know, to, to work an entire, a full workload of innings that season and really just yeah. look solid throughout the year? Yeah, I mean, going to that year, that was the first year, you know, I had still had some blips. Um, yeah. Like the elbow would would you know get a little bit more sore, shoulder get a little bit more sore. My first year in college, that junior year, just because it was my first time really pitching, um, an extended amount of innings. Because you know Massachusetts, you play twenty games in high school, and it's like you're not throwing you know eighty to one hundred innings like you are in professional baseball or in college. So uh, that first season going into twenty twenty two, my main goals were just to throw strikes and be healthy, and you know that was kind of my entire focus going in. It was just like I'm going to throw strikes and I'm going to stay healthy the whole year. And, you know, fortunately I was able to do both of those at a much, um, I guess the strikes thing at a much higher rate than college. That was kind of my one knock on me, I guess, in college that I was more of like people would call a raw pitcher where the stuff was pretty good, but like the, the yeah. pitch ability and the actual, um, you know, command aspect of the pitches was still had work to do. So that was uh, a huge emphasis of me going into the 2022 season. And uh, I think really in high A, I spent about a month there. Um, I thought that was still a little bit similar to college, where it was like, if guys have good stuff, you can you can kind of beat guys with with good stuff there. And then you know, once I got the double A, the beginning of it went real smooth. I think the first month or so I was there, I was throwing the ball really well. Um, and then I hit a little bit of like a rough spot, and I think late June, like into July, um, where it was really up until that point, the only time in my life where my arm and everything felt amazing. And I was going out there and I was getting hit and that kind of yeah. took me a little bit to adjust to that. Cause that's never happened to me in my life. We're like, I'm going out there and I feel great, but I'm just not performing well. And I think once the all-star break hit, I want to say, um, like the next start after that, it, it kind of started to get, I started to get more comfortable, started to change some things up. Just talking to, you know, some of my pitching guys I have back home and, um started to more look at like how i'm getting guys out how i'm sequencing guys instead of just worried about just the pure stuff and i feel like that last i want to say like month and a half i had in uh birmingham went really really well for me and that was kind of when that uh, that time period i was like wow like this is what it really should feel like to be you know a true pitcher yeah i'm looking at the numbers right now it was over your last your last seven starts at Birmingham was eight runs allowed. So that was, yeah, you know, uh-huh. you were you were feeling yourself, right? And yeah, yeah, group, yeah. Right? I uh-huh. think the up and down is also normal, right? Like you had yeah. that middle of the season, right? June, July, like like you said, like you hadn't thrown that many innings ever. Yeah. Right? And, you, uh-huh. and it's, it's a difficult thing for pitchers to transition to a life where you're you're now throwing so much more than you ever threw yeah. and you have to uh-huh. keep doing it for six months straight, right? Yes. So that, uh-huh. that it's very understandable to have that, mm-hmm. you know, that downturn mid-season. And you see that yeah. with a lot of guys, even guys that pitched in college, not necessarily even high school yeah. draft picks, right? Like it's, uh-huh. it's a totally different workload to adjust to yeah yeah no i think that that too along with just like the guys uh like seeing you more and more because especially in that southern league that there's only for sure what eight teams in that's like i feel like i was playing the same teams over and over so it's like you gotta find new ways to get these guys out that you're facing you know every other week or so yeah, that makes perfect sense. Um, so what was your, in terms of your arsenal, um, kind of in 2022, right? What mm-hmm. was, were there any pitches that you really felt like took a step forward in that first year and that yeah. allowed you to kind of just become that pitcher that you were blossoming into in that, that August run? Mm-hmm. Yeah, hundred percent. I think so. I, I mean, the fastball for me, I've always had kind of like a bigger ride fastball that um, I've been able to generate swing and miss with. That was really that first year I pitched in college that year that COVID shortened it. Like I really went to that season with a fastball and then, a baby kind of get me over curveball and like a show me change up. Um, and then once COVID hit, you know, I talked to my pitching coach back at Maryland and uh, we went over some stuff and he was, you know, basically like, you need a slider. That's going to be a little bit harder, like a gyro slider. And then we got to keep working on the change up because even if you didn't need it, you know, in those four games right there, like as you 
progress through your career, you know, once you get into Big Ten play, once you get past that in the pro ball, like you're going to need more than just those two pitches if you want to be a starter. So that was something I really dove into during COVID. Um, and then, like I said, the next year, that off season going from 21, 2021 to 2022, that was a lot of just the consistency of the shapes of all that. Um, and just getting more comfortable with the command of it, the shape of it, how to throw it, you know, when I'm going to use the pitches and what counts versus what hitters. Uh, so in 2022, for me, I feel like the curveball got a lot better um, just from like the 2020, 2021 season. And then for me, the changeup got a lot better, too. Um, and that's something that, you know, even right now, that's still something I'm, I'm trying to consistently work on. But I, I think towards the end of 2022, the confidence I got with throwing the changeup has been um, something I can really use going forward. Right. That's, that's good to know because it's, it's, you know, the starter, the starter repertoire, as you keep going up in, in the ranks, right, you need mm -hmm. more offerings and you need more yeah. offerings you can command. It's, you can't mm -hmm. just have, you know, you're, you can't be a starter in the, in this league with, with two yeah. pitches and uh -huh. you can maybe throw the other ones, right? Like you got to have three, four things you can yeah. go to and actually mm -hmm. trust in different situations, right? No, so yeah. That's a big factor um, for sure. And that's, it's cool that you were kind of able to find the feel for both those pitches uh, over mm -hmm. that season. Um, you know, looking into 2023, right. Uh, you made, you only made nine starts last year, right. You were dealing mm -hmm. with the shoulder stuff. Um, it, you know, it's the injuries can, can derail you even when you're pitching. Yeah. I think it just seemed like you, you weren't fully healthy last year for most mm -hmm. of the year. Right. And then you got shut down um, in June and yeah. have kind of been rehabbing since. So where are you at now with just your arm, how you're feeling mm -hmm. um, and just your kind of your outlook going into to this season? Yeah, so I mean, 2023 is obviously a rough year for me, kind of, you know, on the field and just like mentally, that take, takes the toll on you. Just, you know, knowing that you're capable of so much more, and then you're going out there and your body never feels good, even on, you know, on the off days when you're not even pitching. Like it's it's tough to get your arm ready to go just to play catch when you're not feeling 100%. Um, and, you know, looking back, I probably would have gone about some things a little bit differently that year to kind of make it a little bit easier on myself and you know give myself a better shot to pitch and be healthy sooner this year. Um, but regardless, you know, I can't change any of that now. So now I'm at a, I'm in a much better spot now where uh, I'm in Arizona right now. I'm still building up from the injury from last year. I'm, I guess, still hurt, quote unquote, but um, my shoulder's feeling a lot better. I'm facing hitters and live ABs again now. So um, I should be back into, you know, affiliate play in the next month or two. Um, and now it's just kind of about, you know, feeling good again, getting the consistency of everything back um, and building the workload up. You know, I'll still get a little bit sore sometimes here and there, but it's more just the, the build up sore as opposed to yeah. you know, kind of the pain I was getting before. That makes sense. Yeah. I mean, it's mm -hmm. it also can't be easy. Right. When you were in a situation last year where like you had a chance mm -hmm. to make the roster, the, the yeah. MLB roster mm -hmm. at some point last season. Right. So when you go yeah. into a year and you have that kind of like excitement factor of like, man, I could make the majors this year. Like, yeah. that's really cool. Of uh -huh. course, you want to keep throwing and Of course, yeah. you want to work through everything you're working through. Right. That is completely understandable. Uh -huh. But at the same time, like it just you, you your body wasn't there and your shoulder was yeah. bothering you. Right. So it's uh -huh. like now it's great to hear that you're, you're a feeling good and also just mm -hmm. have you know, the, the outlook of like, you're going to get back, you're going to get into things. Um, and you're, you're already facing live hitters too, which is great. Uh -huh. um, have you noticed kind of how, how is your arsenal than the arsenal we just talked about kind of in 2022, yeah. how is that playing so far? Or have you gotten to the point of, you know, fully throwing off speed? Yet? Uh -huh. So last week was the first time I faced hitters and that was the first outing. I felt like, wow, I, I'm really starting to feel normal again with how, yeah. you know, my stuff's moving, how, the ball fills out of my hand, like kind of the ease of the ability to like command stuff to just create velocity again and in, in the shapes of the pitches. Um, so I feel like I'm, I'm on track to getting back to, you know, kind of the normal me and feeling like myself again. Yeah. That's awesome. That's good to hear for sure. Um, yeah. so you're facing live hitters, right? And you said hoping to get back to affiliate. Um, I assume obviously you, you got to Charlotte, but you know, whether it's Birmingham mm -hmm. or Charlotte, wherever it might be, you're yeah. going to get some innings on your belt. Do you have, uh -huh. I don't know if you have this yet, but do you have a general kind of idea of some, an innings that you're hoping to hit this year um, or just kind of the amount of games you'd like to get into uh -huh. uh, potentially in the minor league season? Yeah. I mean, I'm hoping to still make, you know, at least 15, 16 starts. I'm, yeah. I'm thinking the way it looks right now, I'm, I should be back um, and at least get to pitch in the months of June, July, August, September, and, you know, at the minimum if, if everything keeps going well. So, um, but as of right now, I'm just kind of taking it day by day, week by week, just, you know, making sure everything feels good, staying on top of my stuff each day and, um, not really trying to rush anything, you know, just making sure I'm feeling good and I'm feeling hundred yeah. percent before we keep taking that steps forward. So yeah. that's been what we've been doing, 
you know, since February, since I've been out here and it's, it's been progressing well. So I think that's, you know, kind of our plan is they're just saying, you know, this is what you got this week. This is what you got next week. Let's get through this. Let's get through today and let's get through this week before we worry about anything going forward. And, um, that's been working so far. So it's, it's kind of just, you know, stay the course with that and, um, you know, keep taking care of my body and, and everything will keep going well, hopefully. Yeah, it sounds like the exact outlook you should mm -hmm. be having, and we're excited to see you get back on the mound uh, yeah. in the minors soon enough. Uh, being around, you know, in Arizona this <laughs> spring, what do you kind of get the sense of in just like the organizational pitching depth? I know you obviously mm -hmm. spend more time around pitchers, even if you're rehabbing, right? Like I'm sure yeah. you got to see a variety of the new pitchers brought in last year, mm -hmm. um, whether it's the prospects, the major league guys. Like yeah. I think the general like consensus around around you know people that follow the White Sox is like the organizational pitching is in a better spot than it's been in a while. Um, yeah. What do you think about just seeing all the pitching talent um, in mm -hmm. Arizona this spring and just in the organization? Yeah, I mean, I'd say it's def we're definitely in a much better spot than my first year here, uh, yeah. first two years here, really. Um, I think we got a lot of talented guys, obviously, from the trades, from the drafts, uh, that, you know, it's not just like we have one or two guys. Like, there's definitely some more pitching depth we have in the organization than, than years past. I think that's obviously good for the big league club. Um, I think it can guys can get caught up, like, looking at or comparing you know how i'm doing versus how this guy's doing or how this guy's doing versus another guy and um i think for me personally like i'm just trying to like i said just get back to doing what i'm doing um and then once i get to the affiliates you know be even talking to those guys because i think it's good to get perspectives on people from different organizations and how you know i know we get some guys from the dodgers we get some guys from the angels um, and just talking to them about, you know, what did they do at that org that they liked versus what they do here, you know, just bouncing ideas right. off them. I can think that can help, you know, all of us kind of elevate our game to the, to the highest level. Yeah, sharing opinions and having that mm -hmm. vast knowledge from all different sources, even some of the veteran guys that were brought in this yeah. offseason, right? Like you've got you've got vets right now who who have been on different teams and have seen mm -hmm. the way different pitching coaches run things and, and organizational yeah. drills and all that stuff, right? There's so many different layers to continuing to learn in a communal way. Yeah. Um, beyond that, like, is there anything? This is this is pivoting off the baseball side of things uh -huh. briefly. Um, is there anything that you've done, kind of as you've been working on your recovery, um, whether it be since you know since July or even this offseason, uh -huh. this spring, um, things off the field that have kind of just helped you maintain your balance and just stay kind of locked in but also enjoy yourself uh -huh. i think i started playing a lot more basketball not playing nice. games necessarily but like always just kind of going to the yeah. park and shooting around just to kind of clear my head i think i did that a lot in charlotte um i was once i got shut down in june i was probably in charlotte for another month or so um right. just seeing if i could rehab it there and, and bounce yeah. back quicker and like i said that was kind of a tough time mentally for me where i was just yeah. like every day going to the grind of not feeling great and you know wondering you know, when my shoulder was finally going to start feeling better um so that was something you know, i played growing up and that was something i always enjoyed so yeah being able to take you know an hour and go shoot a little bit and just kind of listen to some music clear my head do stuff like that i mean this off season um i live with Coast montgomery in the off season so nice. you know having him there obviously we both play baseball we both love baseball but i feel like the conversations we have when we're just chilling at the house, it's like it's never about baseball. So, I mean, he, he does a good job. Uh, maybe we both do a good job, like, keeping the good balance of, you know, when we're at the field, we're working hard, we're, you know, very attentive to the work that we put in and making sure that, you know, we're putting in quality work. But then once we get home, it's kind of like, all right, like, let's decompress. Let's, you know, go play video games. Let's go, you know, watch a football game. Like, you know, let's go do something else other than baseball. So we're not doing that 24 seven. So I think the balance we have with that this off season also helped with just like, you know, keeping the mind uh, free, not worrying too much about what's going to happen with everything. Definitely. No, it's important yeah. to keep that balance and keep your, your mentality, not just completely yeah. focused on, you know, your shoulder and yeah. everything else you got going. Uh -huh. um, like you said, yeah, I know you obviously spent some time being drafted with him. And then now you said you mm -hmm. live with him in his office and how special can Colson be briefly? Well, really just, special. Uh, what, do you, what do you see? Yeah. He's, he's a stud. Yeah. I think that, um, you know, everybody uh, draws a comparison to him to Corey Seager. I think he has all the ability in the world to be the player of that caliber. Um, just like the raw talent he has, like watching him go and, and work in the off season in the cage with, you know, a lot of guys that are bona fide big league guys like Brandon Lau from the Rays, you know, Jake Berger was down in Nashville with us hitting, um, Benny Pasatino with the Royals, like a lot of big league guys that he fits right in with them. And like, he, he doesn't look out of place at all. So um, for him to do that at such a young age, I think is really impressive. And, you know, he's only going to get better as he keeps, yeah. you know, playing more. And he's kind of the same thing. Like he, 
he played basketball, he played football growing up. So like he was never really focused on solely baseball um, until he got drafted. So, I mean, this is what year three for him of only playing baseball where it's like, you know, years five, six, seven, eight of him only playing baseball. Like that's just going to be more and more um, impressive. He's going to be able to show who he is really more and more in these next couple of years as he gets more opportunities to show, you know, what he can do at the big league level. Yeah, we're pretty pumped to see where things yeah. take him for sure. Uh-huh. Hopefully you'll be in Charlotte with him soon enough. Yeah. And that'll, be, mm-hmm. that'll be awesome to get to play together, right? Yeah, um, yeah. Is there anybody else that, in whether it's live BP that you've been throwing mm-hmm. in Arizona or just guys that you saw, is there any other hitters that kind of you've either faced or just have seen that you've been like particularly impressed by on the prospect side of things? Uh, within our organization? Yeah. Um, or others, honestly. So a, a guy that I've played with, a little bit, um, I played a little bit high, a little bit in double A, but and then has looked really good again this spring. Is Brian Ramos? I mean, he's another stud, a guy like Colson. I think they're a similar age, um, yeah. where he's just kind of mature baseball wise, like beyond his age. Like the swing's really good. Obviously, the physical talent's there, but um, to see him too, like he works hard every single day. Like he has a good idea of what he wants to do. Um, and then obviously, you guys see the on field plays is, is impressive too. So I'd say definitely him. Um, as far I mean, another guy that we just drafted last year coming off Tommy John too that I've been rehabbing out here with is Grant Taylor, and he's looked yeah, really good in his his live ABs too. So um, I definitely say those two guys were young guys that just since yeah. I've been out here this year have looked looked yeah, really that's good. Awesome. We're we're excited about Taylor too. That's another guy. Yeah, that's, that mm-hmm. was, you know it's rehab is tough, right? But it's like yeah. once you get uh-huh. back, it's there's so much upside to to be uh-huh. excited about there. Um, well, we are are super excited to see you get back on the mound, man. I'm glad to hear that you're feeling good and the arm's yeah. good. Um, we really appreciate you taking the time to, to talk with us about where you're at right now. Yeah, of course. No worries. Thanks for having me on. Thank you, man.